Hi everybody, this is God Sad for the Sad Truth. Uh, some of you who follow me on uh, my various social portals might have uh, noticed, uh, I think it was, uh, let me look here, on January 30th, I had posted a quote from uh, the March for Science. Uh, at, the, at their site they had posted the following, so let me read it for you. At the March for Science, we are committed to centralizing, highlighting, standing in solidarity with and acting as accomplices with black Latinx, so that's L-A-T-I-N-X, I'm not sure what that means, Asian and Pacific Islander, indigenous, non-Christian, so remember, forget about those Christians, women, people with disabilities, poor, gay, lesbian, bisexual, queer, trans, non-binary, a gender, and intersex scientists and science advocates. We must work to make science available to everyone and encouraging individuals of all backgrounds to pursue science careers, especially in advanced degrees and positions. A diverse group of scientists produces increasingly diverse research which broadens, strengthens, and enriches scientific inquiry and therefore our understanding of the world. Yes, because the distribution of prime numbers really depends on whether you are Latinx or queer or trans. Uh, in any case, this was from the actual website for the uh, March on Science. Uh, you can go back to my uh, Facebook wall January 30th to see the original quote. Uh, and then I noticed that Steven Pinker, around that time, I'm not exactly sure when he had posted it, but he had weighed in uh, with a tweet, that, and I'm just going to read it for you. Scientists' March on Washington plan compromises its goals with anti-science PC slash identity politics slash hard left rhetoric. Uh, very delighted that Steven uh, Pinker uh, had weighed in in the manner that he did. And so perhaps because of uh, the fact that several of us uh, uh, who are obviously practicing scientists weighed in, on the lunacy of this kind of idiotic identity politics stupidity. By the way, you might remember that my recent Logical LA lecture was titled Departures from Reason when Ideology Trumps Science. And so here we've got another uh, instantiation of such nonsense where identity politics becomes the, the, the raison d'etre of science, right? Uh, very similar to when Obama had stated that, you know, one of the goals of, uh, I can't remember, some gentleman that he had uh, appointed to uh, to the NASA top position would be to, you know, help uh, Muslims uh, participate more in the space program and feel proud uh, about their, you know, possible contributions or past contributions. I can't remember the exact words he used uh, in science. So somehow the President of the United States was linking uh, NASA uh, with uh, managing the feelings and self-esteem of a particular group of folks. But in any case, uh, yesterday when I was chatting with uh, Dave uh, Cullen on his show, Computer Forever, uh, the, the chat has been posted both on his channel and mine, I referred to a, a story, we were talking about identity politics, I referred to a, a another manifestation of the nonsense uh, that occurs when identity politics becomes, uh, you know, mixed in with science. This is actually a, um, a colleague of mine, a, a female scientist. I'm only mentioning her biological sex because ultimately it's relevant to the story. Uh, posted on my wall saying, hey, I'm surprised that you're not all over this uh, story. And she basically posted uh, uh, an entry that a, a, a female scientist had had entered on a uh, 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 Facebook page, a Facebook group, uh, whereby the scientist in question was saying that uh, she had, been, well, actually, rather than just describing to you what it is, I'll just read you verbatim what it is. I'm not going to mention the, the name of the person, uh, even though I think it's a public Facebook page. So here we go. Uh, this is now her writing this uh, on, uh, as an entry. Recently asked to review two grant applications, I couldn't help but notice that all members, all is capitalized, of both collaborative research teams were men. I'm afraid that this behavior is perpetuating the, quote, men's club of higher level academia. 
I assessed the grants for their academic merits and scored them accordingly, yet felt compelled to at least point out that it seemed that the full teams did not include any female scientists. What do you guys think? Hey, why did she use guys? This must be some sort of internalized patriarchal uh, oppression. What do you guys think? Did I provide over-the-top sensitive or fair and necessary commentary? Should reviewers, too, be commented on this at all? And then she goes on to say why she cares about this issue and so on. Look, uh, public policymakers can certainly look into the issue as to whether, you know, uh, we should be proactively intervening to make sure that there is uh, equal or, or representative uh, uh, participation within the sciences, right? I mean, uh, we should have X number of uh, black females who are pursuing pure mathematics degrees, and we should also have a... A representative sample of overweight atheist Lebanese Jews who study evolutionary psychology uh, and if you don't you know we should also have both hairy and non hairy Armenian men because you know Armenian men come in various forms of hairiness and so we don't want anybody to be marginalized so we should have a proper representation of uh, Armenians as I said whether they are hairy or not uh, participating in science or we should just evaluate science, certainly in the context that this person was mentioning, which is evaluating a grant simply on the scientific merits of that grant. Perhaps the uh, people who were putting together this, t this uh, grant, uh, all of the expertise lay uh, you know, with men. Maybe in this case it was all the group that had the relevant expertise were comprised of men. Maybe in other grants it might be women, in other grants it might be a mixture of both. But this endless attempt to infuse identity politics, not only in the classroom, not only in the march for science, right? Here you're marching for science, it's supposed to be about the importance of, you know, evidence-based thinking, reason, logic, the collection of data, the scientific method. What does that have to do with Latinx and queer and and uh, overweight Jewish men and all the other identity politics. But that's the cancer that has parasitized so many minds so that you could have otherwise perfectly reasonable people. In this case, I think this woman is a neuroscience person. Uh, she evaluates the grant, but she can't help but notice that it lacks biological sex diversity. Well, why does she stop there? What about What if all the men had stated their sexual orientation and they were all heterosexual? Should she then be concerned that there, there isn't enough of a representation of homosexual? Maybe if they're studying some neuroscientific issue, you know, we would benefit from a homosexual experience in studying how synapses fire. Uh, what about uh, transgender people? How come, you know, what if there's no transgender person in the group? What about uh, all races or all skin use? I mean, she, maybe she noticed that there isn't uh, enough skin color diversification within the group. So again, this is absolute nonsense. There is no institutionalized, uh, you know, sexism and racism and all of the other isms uh, in the context of uh, the manner by which universities and other scientific institutes in the West uh, run their ships. If anything, there are endless programs that try to reverse that. Uh, if it exists. And in doing so, then uh, they actually are helping uh, institute, institutionalized reverse racism. And yes, there is such a thing as reverse racism. Don't buy into the nonsense that only whites can be racist. That's nonsense. So bottom line, identity politics have no place in science. Yes, of course, we should always try to eradicate sexism and racism and all other ugly isms, wherever they may uh, lie, wherever they may manifest themselves. But uh, it's time to fight back. I think that uh, Steven Pinker's tweet probably had something to do, I, I don't have any proof of this, but probably had something to do with the fact that if you now go to their website, uh, that passage that I read to you early on uh, in today's clip has been removed. There is no longer mention of Latinx and queer and agenda and all the other BS identity politics labels. Okay. Now, this doesn't mean that we shouldn't care about uh, people's uh, 
unique constellation of factors that constitute their personhoods and that we shouldn't uh, uh, respect them for who they are. But that doesn't mean that that conversation need to, needs to seep its way into, by definition, a pursuit that should be free of identities. There you have it, folks. I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, next week, I'm heading off to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, where uh, I'll be giving an invited lecture. And the following week, I'll be in Ottawa uh, giving a lecture at the Manning Conference. Have a great weekend, everybody. Cheers.